Hello and welcome back to Abstract Linear Algebra, the video series where we talk about vector spaces and linear maps. And indeed, in today's part 25, we will finally talk about the matrix representation for linear maps. The result tells us that we can also represent abstract linear maps by matrices. However, I can already tell you, this only works for finer dimensional vector spaces. Okay, but as always, before we start with the details, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, here on YouTube or via other means. And as you might already know, as a supporter you get access to a lot of additional material with the link in the description. And now what you need to know for this video is the definition of a linear map between two vector spaces V and W. We have two defining properties and they tell us that a linear map respects the structure of a vector space. In particular, we can pull out the vector addition and the scalar multiplication. And please never forget, by doing that we could change the operation, namely here on the left we have the vector addition in V and on the right we have the vector addition in W. And that's always important to keep in mind, because the objects in both vector spaces could be completely different. For example, in V we could have polynomials, which means we add polynomials here, and in W we could have just numbers, which means we have the addition in the numbers here. Okay, but now the conclusion of these two properties is that we only need to know what L does on a basis of V. Please recall, a basis is a linearly independent set that spans the whole vector space. And as I've already mentioned, we will only consider the case of a finite dimensional vector space. This means we can find a basis with finitely many elements. And now by definition, any vector x in v can be written as a unique linear combination. This means we just have to scale the basis elements and add them. And by having this nice linear combination, we can already conclude that we can use the linearity of the map L. So we can just use the fact that we can pull out addition and scalar multiplication. Hence L of x can also be written as a linear combination. And the corresponding vectors in the linear combination are just the images of the basis elements. So we have L of b1, L of b2 and so on. In fact, we see these are all the informations we need to get the information about L of x. In other words, if you know these n images, you know all the infinitely many other images. So we could write, if we know these, we know the whole map L. So you see, linearity is a very strong property because it fixes the map already on the basis. So this is not really something new, but still interesting for some abstract examples. Therefore I would say, let's consider some polynomial spaces again. So V is P3 and W P2. And now as we have discussed in a former video, the differentiation of polynomials is definitely a linear map. And the fact before implies that we only need to know the differentiation on a basis. And in fact our standard basis in the polynomial space is given by monomials. Hence here we need M0, M1, M2 and M3. And now as a reminder, m0 just represents the constant function, so it just sends x to 1, and all the other monomials here can be easily described with an index k. Because there we can say we send x to x to the power k. And of course if you say that x to the power 0 is just the constant 1, we could also include the first one there. However, it's still good to distinguish these cases when we want to apply the derivative. Simply because the derivative of the constant function is the zero vector. And please don't forget, this is the zero vector in our space w, so a polynomial as well. More precisely, the polynomial that sends x to zero for all x. Okay, but now the next question is, what do we have for the other monomials in the differentiation? So what is L of mk? And of course you already know that, because these are the first derivatives one learns. Namely, we put k to the front and reduce the power by 1. Which means now we have the monomial 
m index k minus 1. And indeed, this formula is better to read if k is not equal to 0. But as before, you could define it as the 0 vector and then you would only have one formula for both cases. Nevertheless, the result is that this is the only thing we need to know to do the differentiation of polynomials. This is the result, we have a linear map, so we only need to know what happens on the basis. And exactly this is the reason why we immediately learn this formula in analysis. Okay, now back to the general case. What we have done here is using a basis isomorphism. In other words, if we have our abstract vector space V here, then we can fix a basis B and the corresponding basis isomorphism. And what we get is just the concrete space Fn. And there you know, we just have our standard basis there as always. And now we can go back and forth with our basis isomorphism. So this is quite nice, but our linear map L acts on the upper level. Which simply means that the images of L lie in our vector space W here. And now the idea is, in the same way as before, we can also choose a basis here. Let's call it C. Moreover, let's assume that in this case, the dimension is given by the natural number m. Hence, we also have a basis isomorphism here on the right hand side. So phi c will map to fm. And also there, we want to take the canonical unit vectors as a basis. And now we immediately see the nice result, namely we have a new linear map here on the lower level. Indeed, this is simply a composition of linear maps. First we have this inverse, then comes L, and then the other basis isomorphism. And now since L is a linear map, this is definitely also a linear map, but now from Fn to Fm. And in fact, for these linear maps we already know a lot. In particular, we already know that we can represent them by a matrix. And exactly this knowledge is what we want to use here. So more precisely, we want that f of a vector x is equal to a times x. And there we have our matrix A that should represent the linear map f. And there we immediately see it has to be an m times n matrix. And moreover, we see if we put in the canonical unit vectors, we get out the columns of the matrix A. So for example, the first column of A is given by f of E1. And there E1 just stands for the column vector given by 1, 0 and so on. So simply the first canonical unit vector as we know it. However, now it means that we put this vector into our composition here. Which means that first our basis isomorphism here translates E1 back to B1. And therefore, the result we get here is phi c of the image of b1 under L. And now it's also clear how we get the other columns of A. We just put in the basis elements into the map L and then we look at the images and represent them with respect to the basis C. Hence, what we get is indeed our matrix representation of the linear map. So let's put this into a formal definition. So for any linear map L between V and W, we can find an M times N matrix which represents this map. And since the crucial ingredient here is given by the two bases, we put them into the index of L. More precisely, we write it like that, that the basis B comes in from the right hand side and the basis C comes out. This fits together with the matrix vector multiplication where we also put the input to the right of the matrix. Therefore, this is a good notation for the matrix that represents our linear map here. And now we already know that the first column of the matrix has to look like this. And then the second column here gets the basis element B2 and so on. And there we have it, this is our M times N matrix. And as already mentioned, we call it the matrix representation of the linear map L with respect to the basis B and C. Hence, if you choose different bases here, you will get out a different matrix as a representation for L. So as you should see it here is that L is our abstract linear map 
and the matrix can be used for calculations. And then sometimes the idea could be to choose suitable bases such that the matrix representation is simple in some sense. Okay, then for the end of the video I would say let's revisit our example from before. There we had the vector space V given by the polynomials with maximal degree 3 and we had a basis given by the monomials. And now in order to formulate our matrix representation we also need a basis for our W. And there we only need three basis vectors so we can go through the monomials M0, M1 and M2. So more or less the same basis, just with one element less. Okay, and now we see for our matrix representation of our linear map L, we have to calculate four columns. And please don't forget, our linear map L was given by differentiation. And in fact, we already know all the images, so calculating the columns should not be a problem. So for example, for the first column here, we need the derivative of M0. And there we already know, this is the zero vector in W. So again, just the zero polynomial. And now phi zero sends that to our concrete vector space F3. Which simply means that we get the zero vector with three components in F3. So very nice, this is already our first column in our matrix. Hence, now we can continue to the second column. Which means, there we have to know the derivative of m1. And as we have learned before, this is simply m0. And now since this is the first vector in our basis c, phi c will send this vector to the first basis vector in f3. Indeed, this is exactly how the basis isomorphism works. Hence what we get here is 1, 0, 0. Okay, and now you just have to do the same with the third and the fourth column and then you are finished. More precisely, we get our 4 times 3 matrix out. So this is our matrix representation of the differentiation. So first we have 0, 0, 0, then 1, 0, 0, then 0, 2, 0, and lastly 0, 0, 3. So there you see, we have translated our abstract linear map to a matrix representation. Therefore, all the information of this map is now stored in such a table of numbers. You just have to know the corresponding bases of the vector spaces and then these two things carry the same amount of information. And in fact this can be very helpful for calculations because you can do all the matrix multiplications with the matrices here and then just translate back in the end. And the details for that I will show you in the next video. So I really hope we meet again and have a nice day. Bye bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.